Welcome, welcome, welcome to the podcast of Wake Up Church. We've been asleep for too long. This is your host, Dr. Rosalind Best. Today's podcast is being brought to you by BestLegacyFoundation.org. Please visit the website for opportunities for scholarships, mentorships, and a chance to leave a lasting legacy. Today's podcast is entitled, You're Most Vulnerable When You Get Too Comfortable. Let's get it, church. Oh, yeah. As we are going to carefully examine Think about the times in maybe your life that you just got way too comfortable and it led to mistakes and things that you regret doing. Alcohol has a way of providing a false sense of comfort and relaxation and allows people to get way too comfortable and they begin to do things many times that are contrary to their real character. Let's look at a few examples in our lives and and in our culture that have omitted being too comfortable in scenarios. King David, his men were out in battle and he should have been out there with them, but instead he was back home chilling, relaxing, and he gazed upon another man's wife taking a bath. He got too comfortable. And he wasn't concerned about the battle or the war because there was a war going on inside of his members for a married woman. Samson. Samson uh, was instructed by the Lord, the type of women he was not to entertain. And yet he got very comfortable going down to where those particular type of women were. You can't put hot coals to your chest and say, I'm I'm not going to get burned. To thine own self be true. Don't lie to you. No matter who you may lie to, don't lie to you. President, former President Bill Clinton. He was in the governor's position before he became the governor of Arkansas, before he became president of the United States. And he got in the White House and he just got a, bit too comfortable and relaxed around Monica Lewinsky. How can a woman give you oral in the White House, in your position? That's just way too comfortable. And he was vulnerable and she was vulnerable to do the very acts that seem just unbelievable. Televangelist Jimmy Swaggart, when he fell from grace, he had formerly just been pointing the finger at um, another televangelist and didn't even realize that the sins he was committing was going to be brought to the forefront. So sometimes we get too comfortable and that's the very time Satan is planning and plotting to expose all of our shortcomings. Be mindful. The the Queen's Prince Andrew was involved in a very high-profile sexual scandal dealing with Harvey Weinstein. And he was on vacation. That's that place where we're comfortable. He was in America, and he fell prey to the... Um, habits of pedophiles. He just got too comfortable being involved with pedophiles. And that's all I'm going to say about that. So his accusations are valid. And I, Dr. Rosalind Best, a.k.a. Roland, that's what growing up they called me. I became way too comfortable in a relationship that started out as a friendship. And I was loving, enjoying the conversation, the sense of humor and the passion for God that this person had. And I fell into sin. Not proud of it. But just being aware of the fact that 
you are most vulnerable when you are just so comfortable and not really being prayerful. God calls a comfortable Christian lukewarm. And there is no fire in your prayer when you're lukewarm. Just, you know, Father God, I just thank you for what you do. There is no fire, no passion when there's no urgency and there's no vigor for God. Lukewarm Christians are some of the worst because they get in the way of those that need to be on fire and those that are on fire. They're just sort of in the way. Mark 14, 38 says, watch and pray, watch and pray, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Your greatest opposition to your spirit is your flesh. My greatest opposition to my spirit that's willing to do right and serve God is my flesh wanting to do wrong and be aroused and entertained. Know the enemy that you're fighting. It's all in one. When we are comfortable and not praying, we are vulnerable to spiritual attacks. Satan is a master strategist, plotting for our downfall and demise. When we are comfortable and we are not praying, we've let our guards down. And many times we are dull in our spiritual senses due to a lack of prayer. But just know this and be encouraged. Jesus is our covering and he is our protector. He has already made provisions for us. Just like some of the folks prepared for Hurricane Ian, Jesus has already made preparations for the hurricanes headed our way. They will not destroy us. They will not to cause just fatal destruction. Jesus has already made preparation for the hurricanes headed your way, headed my way. I just want to pray for you and encourage you that you're going to be all right. You're going to be safe because as we submit to King Jesus and ask him, Lord, stir up my appetite. For prayer. Let the fire of God incense my lukewarmness that I just won't be okay with praying over my food, praying a little bit, but let my passion, let my passion be praise. Let my passion be prayer. Let my passion be to invoke your presence, even on this podcast, that every person listening will receive and experience an, a fresh anointing, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, a fresh awareness of who you are, and that we will watch with not just our natural eyes, but with our spiritual eyes, we will watch and pray that we fall not into temptation. God says that even though temptations come, the word of God says he has made a way of escape. So there is no excuse to say, I fell into sin. If we look for a way out, then we can get out. But if we want to stay in it, we're not going to win it. We're just going to stay in it. So trust that God knows what is best. Trust that God will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. If we ask him to lead us, if we ask him, to guide us. If he asks us, Lord, please lead me not to temptation. Because this season, with, with the fall coming in, I don't need to be hugging up on. I don't need to be booed up with anybody. I just need to be comforted by your spirit, comforted with friendship, comforted with family, comforted with people that there is no non-sexual stimuluses. I know me a little. The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? But we don't know what's all in our heart. So we petition God and ask him, Father, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I don't want to do right just because it's what I'm supposed to do. 
I want to do right because I love you. I want to please you. I want to serve you. Not with my mouth, but I want to serve you with my whole heart. I want to serve you with the fire of God and excitement because it can become contagious. Saints, are we going to do better and not allow ourselves to just relax and get comfortable? But that we would allow the fire of the Holy Spirit to breathe on us a fresh anointing, to breathe on us a new rekindling of our passion to live for God on purpose. We got this because God's got us. No hurricane's going to destroy us because we have already been given provisions. Mm, mm, mm. God loves you. And he's depending on you to win. In Jesus' name, amen.